Thank you for contributing to clean energy. Abby Watrous is a fifth generation engineer, but working strictly in a lab just isn't her thing. She wants her efforts to help people immediately. So she's focusing on cheaper, cleaner energy for cooking and heating in rural China. Her research uses everything from solar panels to pig waste. I was really fascinated by what was going on in China, and my advisor at CU, Dr. Jai, is Chinese. So、um, I found out about the National Science Foundation (EPC) or East Asia Pacific Summer Institute, and applied for that. From the University of Colorado at Boulder, she went to Beijing to do two things: create more renewable energy and less pollution. It's a complex assignment with China's exploding consumer desires. In Beijing alone, a burgeoning middle class is adding about 1,500 cars every day. The air pollution was hard for me. The first week, I couldn't breathe. I felt like I got <laughs> kicked in the chest. Gray days like this were the norm. On rare days with blue skies, people couldn't stop talking about it. China is the second largest energy consumer in the world, the highest producer of carbon dioxide. Watrous traveled to nine provinces, encouraging rural families to cook and heat with biomass, from straw to rice husk to garden compost, all renewable resources. Right now, most people use cheap but very dirty coal. This picture shows honeycomb coal,、um, which are these little circular、um, coal briquettes with the holes poked in the middle, and this is what millions of people in China use to cook their dinners on. With colleagues at Tsinghua University, Watrous became keenly aware that a solution's not any good if people can't afford it. I think a good place to start is cook stoves. It's something that's small, more affordable, can fit in with the family structure, and can make a huge difference right away. I mean, even doing something as simple as putting a chimney on a stove. Yunnan Province in southwest China is not the place for pricey, high-tech solutions. So researchers are finding answers from everyday life. Even modest homes usually have pigs, a garden, and a latrine. This is a really fascinating little house because it's all run off of renewable energy. The waste from the toilet and the pigs and the vegetable garden all go into the biogas digester, which produces methane, and then they cook on the methane. The Yunnan Eco Network teaches local youngsters about the possibilities of renewable energy. But clean energy from pig poop? Anybody have a problem with that? Based on my experience, people would be willing to use、um, the digesters and cook on the methane, which is generated from pig poop. Watrous learned that sensitivity to local customs was as important as her engineering skills. I'm actually the only American on my entire team, so my professor and all the other grad students I work with are Chinese, and I'm really thankful for that.、Um, so I think it helps keep me humble and maybe a little more culturally tuned in. Token, come here. Watrous is enjoying her canine friends, the clean air, and the blue skies of Boulder for now.、And、like she did in Beijing, she uses a bike for most of her commuting, but she's already gearing up for her next assignment. I just found out that I won a Fulbright scholarship to China, so that means I get to study language full time in Beijing for four months, from August to December, and then January to October, I'll be doing research on energy education and rural energy in Beijing. Her advisor, engineering professor John Zai, says she is drawn to engineering projects that help the people who need it most. I was surprised to see the the passion of Abby for this、uh, topic, and、uh, she learned quite a bit. And before she went for China about the building systems, energy issues policy, and I think um, uh, her work is really outstanding. Watcher spends part of her busy days making sure the next generation is as mesmerized about engineering as she is. So I wrote the book in English, and then my friends at Tsinghua translated it to Chinese for me.、Um, and it's to teach kids about the basics of renewable energy. As for China's energy future and its ambitious goal of having 15% of its energy from renewables by 2020, I think the government's taking it seriously, and they're looking into some great ways to using. Renewable energy. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhart.